Don't beat yourself up about it. Oh, please don't beat yourself up about it. I'm sure you learn from it. What I tell y'all? What did I tell y'all? I told y'all that she sat there and coddled that man and told him it was okay. And what did I say? I wonder how she gonna feel when he cheats on her. And here we are. Love is Blind, season six, episode eight. Hey y'all, it's Chloe and we're back with another video. Love is Blind, season six, episode eight. Baby, the season is giving what the season is supposed to give. And I am here for all of it all of it <laughs> let's go ahead and get into it but before we do i need you guys to do me a favor if this is your first time here sit back relax watch the video through and if you like what you see you like what you hear go ahead and subscribe to the channel because baby we are on the road to 10k if you are one of my lovely members or subscribers hey y'all how y'all doing y'all i'm i'm doing good i'm doing extremely well and i'm so excited to record this review because baby i got some things to get off my chest so let's just go ahead and get into it so Taylor and Ashley wedding planning is completely different than Rams and um, Marissa because she don't want that man involved at all, okay? She wants him to just show up, okay? Um, he said, um, no, I kind of want to be involved in my wedding, you know what I'm saying? It's not really just your wedding, it's an our wedding type of thing. But anyway, they agree that she can take the lead on a wedding and he'll be able to name their son one day. Girl, please don't have no kids by this man. He already got three that he owe child support for. Mm, I'ma let it go. I'ma let it go. <laughs> so Steven takes Monica to a press flower shop. You get it? He finally got her the flowers. <laughs> finally. It's not the flowers she wanted, but I guess it's cute enough and it's simple. She loves it, okay? Um, and they, you know, make these little pressed flowers. And, you know, once again, she has to be passive aggressive. Which one do you think is better? Which one do you think is better? Steven only brought her here because he wants to get laid. He did not bring her here because he actually wanted to give her flowers. He wants to get laid. He wants to be rewarded. And his reward will be sex. So now he feels like he needs to do something to get it. And that's why we're at the flower shop. We find out that Monica's dad don't want to be a part of this process, okay? He supports, but from afar because he doesn't want to be on camera. I can understand that, right? He says that he wants to meet her father. He can't wait. He feels comfortable. He wants to show her father that he's a genuine man. Are you sure about that, Stephen? Are you sure about that? So now Monica feels safe enough to tell him that her father whispers on the phone, are you sure he's not a liar like your other boyfriends? Are you, Monica? Are you? I told y'all Monica be giving me pick-me energy when she coddled that man inside the pods when he said he cheated. She was like, don't beat yourself up about it. And then I told y'all that she don't like that man and she's only tolerating him because I felt like she's just so desperate to get married. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. We can now. We might as well just go ahead and get into it because these people are crazy. So Nick takes Hannah to meet his mom and dad. Oh no, not his mom and dad, I'm sorry. He lives with his mom and dad. He took her to his house so she can see his room in the basement. <laughs> when we get inside the house, okay, she's looking around, she realizes his mother is very religious. Is she gonna have a problem with the fact that she's not really religious? And he's like, no, I don't think she'll care too much. Cool, okay? As she's walking by, she's like, so who cooks the meals? Your parents? Who takes care of the cats? Your parents? Who cleans the house? Your parents? Who does the laundry? Your parents? Who pays the bills? Your parents? She's realizing that this man don't do nothing for himself. And not only that, he catfished his house because she thought he had like this big old house and you know, a big old pool table. Cause when she opened the magic secret door where he was hiding all the junk from where he cleaned up <laughs> y'all know how it go you go ahead and just throw everything in the closet yeah that's what he did right so she opens the door and she's like oh oh that's the pool table with all the stuff on it yeah that's the pool table with all the stuff on it and i'm like nick but who really are you and hannah don't act surprised because you knew that man lived with his parents because he told you he lived with his parents but you thought it was a big old mansion with multiple rooms a big pool table chandeliers hanging from the sky that's what you thought you also thought that he was hot enough that you was going to be able to bypass his immaturity and the fact that his parents pay all his bills but then you realize Mm, it's not giving what it's supposed to give, right? That's what's happening? Okay. 
So Marissa takes Rams to meet her friends and they're sitting down talking. Oh my God, everything's so great. We just love each other. Everything's great except for he doesn't like people in the military and I was in the military. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Her friend was like, but did he, you know she was in the military? And you know that's a big part of her life. Her friend also was in the military. And she's like, I'm proud to be in the military. Well, so what if she wants to go on reserve? He's like, oh, no, 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 no. She go on reserve, baby. It's over. And they like, just like that, even though you love her. And he was like, just like that, even though I love her. I will divorce her ASAP. I'm like, mm. see what I tell you. What did I tell you, Marissa? You need to the you need to figure out what you really want. Because if you can't live your life proud to be in the military, even though you speak a good game, you are feeling judged and you also feel ashamed to express how happy you are to be a part of the military. Please don't tell me that you are about to marry this man when he is literally judging you for who you are in a big part of your life. And I'm still trying to figure out he knew this, you knew this, why are we here? I was really loving this relationship, but now I'm sitting here thinking to myself like, mm -mm, it's not gonna work. Cause I feel like she already said she applied for the reserve, but she didn't enjoy it when she went there. So she definitely enjoyed being in the military. Even though she wants to make it seem like, you know, I hate patriarchy and I can never press the button to launch the missile. Yeah, 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 it's all talk. It's all talk, girl. You know you love that ish, okay? Just admit it, it's okay. And if he can't accept it, then he just can't accept it. So now it's time for Tim to meet Alex's family. And Alex's father doesn't know that she's engaged. So they already had this plan where, you know, she's gonna take off her ring. They all gonna sit down, they are gonna talk about the process. She's going to let them know that they're living together and that they chose each other, okay? They're going to get up, walk away, and then he's going to ask her father for her hand in marriage. And I'm sitting here like, I don't know if this is a good plan or not, because what if this man says no? You're already engaged. <laughs> like, what if he says no? What are you going to say? Well, too bad. We're engaged. Like, did y'all think this through or what? Okay. Her mother's there. Her brother's there. And when Tim comes in, you know, everybody seems to be like warming up to him. Father was not here for her from the very beginning because he's looking like you live, you live with this man. You know this man well enough because like what's going on here? But you know, Tim really has a good way of explaining and introducing himself and he really you know sold their relationship and i told you that i really hate that that argument or that fight that they had really tainted the image of them for me because the way he spoke about their relationship was like everything okay i'm like dang tim alex this could be a thing when alex asked her father for her hand in marriage I am not going to lie to y'all. Baby, I cried. I cried. My eyes was watering. When he pulled out that note and he read it, mm, I don't remember hearing him read that in the pause. Did he read that in the pause? Because mm, her father, the, ooh, when he got emotional and he started crying, oh, mm, it was beautiful. Like, I'm sitting here like, Tim and Alex, y'all got to work now. Because that was the most beautiful scene of the season so far. And you cannot put her father through y'all not getting married after what just happened in this kitchen. Okay? When he went out and was like, he said yes, I said, I forgive you, Alice, girl. I forgive you. <laughs> y'all go ahead and kiss and make up, okay? Because y'all family now. Dad said he accepts you into his family and you like his son now. So here we are. We a big old family. We are family. Okay? <laughs> But I will say, when they was talking and mom asked them, so have y'all had any arguments yet? And they wanted to like sugarcoat it and make it seem like, you know, it wasn't as intense as it was. Oh, no, no, no. They definitely had an argument, mom. She put her hand over his mouth. He packed his stuff up and was about to leave. But I get it. We're not about to put our family in our business like that. I get it. I get it. But I mean, y'all definitely played it cute. <laughs> Very cute. So Taylor takes Garrett to her house. 
this girl ain't got no food, okay? He said, you got a bachelor fridge. She has wine, beer, and protein drinks. <laughs> I'm like, girl, what do you do? What route do you know how to cook? What's happening here? I'm assuming that she probably threw out most of her stuff because she knew she wasn't going to be there for a while and she didn't want stuff to go bad. I'm going to just have to stick with that. That's my story and I'm sticking with it, okay? But nonetheless, they sit down and they start talking, okay? Because... They're trying to figure out where they're going to live. She wants him to come to San Diego. And he's like, I don't really know how I feel about that. And she was like, well, hold up. Because in the pause, you said you was excited about moving to San Diego. And he was like, it's not that I'm not excited. You know, if we have kids, I want them to be able to see their grandparents, you know, and holidays and stuff like that. It's not that I'm not excited. But for you, I'm excited. I like them. I do. I feel like they just navigate everything well. I like them. When he said that he's all in and if she changed her mind, he would be crushed. I was like, ooh, this our couple. I hate to tell y'all, but as much as y'all wanted to be any other couple, this is our couple, okay? Cause she was like, I was worried that you would change your mind. And I'm like, Y'all ain't going nowhere. <laughs> Y'all ain't going nowhere. Y'all problems not even big enough to be problems. Y'all, as if Stephen has not gotten on my nerve enough in the last episode, he had the nerve to lose his job. Now, I'm starting to think he ain't have no job because he's definitely coming off as a liar and a cheater. Talking about something, he texts his boss like, hey, do I still have a job? What do you mean, do you still have a job? You didn't work this out before you left? You just hopped up like Hannah and quit your job? Did you have one? I don't buy it for one second. And then she was like, it's okay. I'll be your sugar mama. Stupid. Pick me. Yup, yeah, all of that. All of that. Girl, because for what? You just met this man. Even though he said he's only in between jobs for about a week. Child, Steven's a liar. That's what he is, a liar. And just like that, the conversation is switched to sex. Why? Because Steven can't seem to think of anything other than sex. Sex is on his mind all the time. He's a hornball. The fact that he sat there and said, like, you know, you can stick your peen in anything. You can even put it in mac and cheese. And she was like, have you done that before? And he's like, no. And I'm like, are you sure about that? Because I'm, I'm sure you have. Is given desperate enough to do that. And then not only that, he's talking about some pegging. I'm like, do you want to get pegged or are you pegging? What's happened? What is happening? I'm disgusted watching this conversation. How, sir, you don't have no job. The last thing that should be on your mind is sex. You're telling her you're concerned about y'all not having sex. And she says, well, it's because you're unsure about this marriage. And I'm not going to just be giving myself to you. Now, all of a sudden, he's sure about the marriage. He's not overwhelmed anymore. He's excited to meet her dad. He finally going to take her to the flower shop just so he could get laid. Can you not get sex in the real world? That you had to come on Love is Blind, do all of this extra talking just so you could have someone to sleep with and then pray to God that you get enough attention that the women's flood your DM so that they can offer to suck your peen? Is that what this was all about the whole entire time? Because that's what it's feeling like. Mm, that's Steven. Now, I know Monica got her, her issues with her. But Steven, baby, I can't. I just, you're disgusting. Y'all, Hannah is in the house cleaning up. The moment I heard her say, the house is gross, I said, oh, she's about to curse Nick out. She's about to curse Nick out. Nick walks into the house, go change his clothes. She like, where you going? <laughs> he like, I got to work on a Zoom call? Because like you put on a whole suit and a whole shebang. Like, what's going on? So she asks him, like, can you take the trash out? And he's like, oh, I took the trash out this morning or the trash that I'm asking you to take out now because that's not the trash that was taken out. Now she sits down and she's like, listen. I got to tell you to clean. I got to tell you to take the trash out. I got to tell you to do the laundry. Like, what's going on? I said, you know what, Hannah? I might have judged you, girl. Because at this point, it definitely is looking like this man is immature. 
She's sitting down trying to talk about finances with this man. And now we found out that he's 28 years old and his parents is paying his phone bill. His parents is paying his car insurance. His parents is paying his rent. Like, he doesn't even have any plans on paying his own bills. So much so that he told her that he wants to go 50-50. So this way his parents can't continue paying the phone bill, they can continue paying his car insurance, and then all he gotta do is give her a little bit of money for the rent and the utilities. She's sitting here like, do you have any stocks? Oh, I don't need no stocks. I don't really know nothing about no stocks. Don't you lose money from stocks? Let's talk about sports. I am sitting here with my mouth open. Did you really just say you rather talk about sports than stocks and he said that's because you know you could lose a lot of money and she was like well i don't have a lot of money so low risk low um low risk low reward but it's better than nothing mr let's talk about sports i can't even be mad at you hannah i can't even be mad at you because literally this man does absolutely nothing for himself I can't even believe the conversation that they had. I was sitting there in awe, like, are you effing kidding me? He doesn't want to stop. He doesn't even want to pay his own phone bill. But you know what? It's 2024. If my parents decide they want to pay all my bills, baby, I'll let them. <laughs> Not even going to hold you. I will let them. <laughs> Ashley takes him to meet her dad. Dad looks good, okay? I see you, dad. And... That dag on Tyler has the gift of gab. The way he sat there and sold himself and how he told the father that he felt safe with her. He felt comfortable and vulnerable. He even cried around her. And you know, men, we don't cry, but I felt safe enough to cry with her. I said... because you have no idea, no idea that this man is the love is blind swindler. And I want y'all to know that I am mad that all this tea came out about this man because this is a love story that I want to genuinely enjoy. And the fact that all these things are flowing around the internet, I just cannot enjoy it. So when Ashley got up and Tyler went to ask her father for her hand in marriage, her, the, seeing her father get worked up, like, you're a good man and I believe in you. When he said, I believe in you, I said, no, don't believe in him. Don't believe in him. He was like, this is my baby girl. This is my only daughter. You better treat her right. When he was crying, y'all, I'm like, oh. My heart strings because I already know. I already know. He said he is happy as long as she is happy. And if that changes, then he'll step in. I said, I wonder if he stepped in yet. I'm just curious. I wonder, have dad stepped in yet? So then we get to this scene where Monica is crying. Monica's crying on Taylor. And I'm like, what is going on, okay? She says that Steven went to do a sleep test and he never came home. Tyler said, you know, I thought it was weird when we was in Mexico and he said that the girls would be in his DMs and he would have to fight the temptation because they would be offering to suck his pee. I thought that was very much weird. I'm like, yeah. He's literally been giving you all the signs. The signs were there the whole time. So come to find out she found text messages in his phone about fetishes and coming and all types of stuff, okay? She's like, Steven, this is disgusting. He's like, you're right. You're right. She said, stop acting. I know I'm right. Say something else. I said, oh, she mad. She is mad. So now she's like, why did you come here? Why did you do this? Like, who even are you? And she wanted to let him know that she definitely does not believe that he did a sleep test. 
He's talking about some, he messed up because he was texting the night at the sleep test. She was like, I just saw these text messages today. You was texting this girl today. And I said, and he's still lying. And he's still lying. And he's like, oh, that's why I'm packing my stuff and I'm leaving. And she was like, good. And why you wanted, how about you Venmo me the money that I've been using to cover you for the last couple of weeks? So he pulls out his phone. She was like, do it now. He pulls out his phone and he sends her money. So I'm like, let me get this straight. Wait, I'm the Ricky hold up. Because you mean to tell me you got the money in your account and you still was using hers? What in the world? You are disgusting. You really tried to make it seem like you was only texting that girl because she wasn't having sex with you. And I'm glad that she didn't let you flip it on her. But let me tell you something, Steven. You are disgusting. And I'm starting to think that he was talking to an escort. That's the energy this gives me. He's willing to pay for it. While she's out there spotting him every time they go somewhere, he's holding on to his money so he could go pay for sex on the side. Nasty. But you know what? Monica, don't act like you don't have a part to play in this, sis. Because when that man told you in the past that he was a cheater, and you was like, don't beat yourself up about it. And what did I say? Let him beat himself up until he learned his lesson. I said, because if it happens to you, you're going to want him to beat himself up. Now look at you wanting to beat him up. You, you coddled him. I told you he was going to think that you were okay with this. I think he really thought he was going to be able to get over on you. And the fact that he even tried to make it seem like it's because you wasn't having sex with him is crazy. Where they find these men at? You got one out here not taking care of his kids, owing back child support, and still owing women for money. You got another one out here who seems like he's addicted to sex, okay, and willing to pay for it, ain't got no job. And then you got another one who lives with his parents and doesn't pay any of his own bills. Literally, where? No, I'm being serious. Where are y'all finding these men? What is really going on? Ooh, child, love is blind, love is blind, love is blind. Mm, mm, mm. Monica, I feel bad for you, sis. But when that man told you he was a cheater, you basically told him it was okay. Now look. Whew, love is blind, and it will take over your mind. What you think is love is truly not. <laughs> you need to elevate and find, okay? Because when I tell you this is a mess, this is a mess. That was the episode, y'all. Episode 8. I really hope y'all enjoyed this review. If you are not subscribed to the channel, please subscribe to the channel because we are on the road to 10K. Go ahead and do what y'all do. Leave them comments down below and let me know what y'all think. Let me know what y'all think about all of this, okay? Drop me some yellow hearts and let me know that you was here. Like the video. Like the video. And with all that being said, I'll talk to you guys later. Episode 9 review. See you soon. Peace.